Today I'm here with one of the coolest videos I've done. It's a bit of a smaller scale video. Some of my videos have had lots of different pianos and instruments in them, but this one here is a bit of a simpler video. On my left, I guess it would be your right, I have a Bosendorfer 190 from about the early 1900s. And on my right, or your left, I have a Steinway & Sons Model O, which is from a similar time period. I believe it's from about 1915 to 1920. So what do these two pianos have in common? Well, they're both European. This was made in Hamburg, Germany, and this was made in Vienna, Austria. They're both from approximately the same time period, give or take 20 years. They're both about the same size. This is 190 centimeters. I don't exactly know how many feet and inches this is, but it's the Steinway Model O. So they're both about the same size, both European pianos, and they've also both been rebuilt, I think, by the same person. And whoever rebuilt these did a fantastic job of doing them. This one especially looks like a brand new piano. This one, as you can see, has an art case. So it doesn't look brand new. Uh, it's not like a new style, but it's the quality of a brand new piano, and it sounds like a new piano. So I think this is a really cool comparison. I've had some people ask me to do like a comparison between like a baby grand and a midstride grand and like a 10-foot grand. That's not this. This is comparing two baby grands from approximately the same era, approximately the same place in the world, and I think it's going to be a kind of a cool one. So what I'm going to do is start off on the Steinway & Sons. I'm going to play my little test piece that I wrote myself. Then I'm just going to swivel around and play the same thing on the Bosnerver. Then I'm going to swivel back around, play a Bach piece on the Steinway, swivel back around, and play the same thing on here. And then after that, I'm going to play, I think, an excerpt of Claire de Lune on both of these. I do have a full video of each of these pianos where I play Claire de Lune in its entirety. But to keep this video just a little bit shorter, I'm just going to play an excerpt of Claire de Lune. And I hope that you guys enjoy that on both of these pianos. And then after that, I'll talk about my feelings, what I like about each piano, what makes them different, what makes them similar. And I hope that you guys enjoy. So let's get started here. 1915, 1920, restored Steinway O versus a 1900s, maybe late 1890s. I don't know the exact year, but a early 1900s uh, Bosendorfer 190. Hope you guys enjoy it. I know it made crazy noises, I'm sorry. There, no crazy noises that time.
So hopefully you enjoyed this comparison between these two interesting pianos. And I'm sorry about all the weird bench noises. I can't really help doing that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It's really interesting because there are two pianos from the same basic part of the world, from Europe, and from approximately the same time period, but yet because they're constructed differently by two completely different manufacturers who have a completely different view on how a piano should built, should be built, they actually have a completely different sound. The Homburg Steinway O is very rich and deep and very, very complex sounding, whereas compared to this, the Bosnipper has a very clean, very pure, very simple sound. And I can't really say that one is necessarily better than the other. I personally prefer the Steinway to this Bosnerfer, but perhaps some of you would prefer this Bosnerfer over the Steinway. It really just, at this point, both of these are really, really amazing pianos. And at this point, it kind of just comes down to what sound do you prefer? I really love the sound here of the bass on the Steinway. I mentioned this in my full review of this piano, and I'll mention it here again. For a piano of this size, which is maybe about, I don't know, close to six feet, but not much bigger than that, the bass on this piano is probably the best I've ever heard from a piano of this size. It has a little bit of that tubby sound that a smaller piano will have, but it's very deep and it's very thick sounding. Listen to how this sounds. And then compare it to the bass on this. You can hear that there is a lot of difference here. This here is just more, I don't know, pillowy and soft and rich. And this one here has a little bit of, perhaps it's brighter overtones. It has a bit of a different sound. I personally really, really love the sound of the bass on this piano. It feels like it's right there. It's, you can almost touch the sound. It's that cool. And it has a really, really fantastic sound. And another thing I love about this Steinway here is the sound of the treble. It's very, very resonant. Take a listen to the very beginning of Claire de Lune here. Hear all that? You can, of course, hear the notes that I'm playing, but you can also hear other notes that I didn't play. It's kind of like a natural built-in reverb in a way. And I love that sound of sympathetic resonance in a piano. This Bosnerfer actually doesn't have very much of it. Check this out. Same passage. You can hear it. And it is there, but from what I'm hearing, it's not quite as noticeable as on the Steinway. Is that good? Is that bad? Either way, it really doesn't matter. It, it, it really comes down to what do you like? Do you like the sympathetic resonance sound or do you not like the sound of sympathetic resonance? I personally do, but like I said, these pianos are really so good that at this point it kind of comes down to which aesthetic do you want? Do you want the more modern? Do you want the more antique? And which sound do you want? Another thing I want to mention about the treble is that the treble in this piano is very quiet and very soft and gentle. And the treble on this piano is a lot louder and brighter and more powerful. So if you're wanting to do, say, home performances with other musicians or something like that, this would probably be the better piano between these two because this has a bit more power. If you're playing loud music, you can really hit it hard and it'll really project. And if you're playing quiet, you can still make it go very quiet. This one here I don't think would work quite as well for playing loud music with other uh, musicians up here in the treble. It just wouldn't quite have what it needs. But wh where this instrument would work, that this one probably wouldn't work as well, is in like a really small room. If you have a small room that you want to put a piano in, or if your house or living quarters are small, a piano like this that just kind of has a natural, naturally quieter tone would be a really good choice. Because if you put this piano in a tiny room, especially if it had like wood floors and bare walls, it would probably get really annoying. And I'm just being honest. Whereas this piano probably wouldn't. It would be a bit more gentle up here in the treble because the treble is naturally quieter compared to, played the same volume. Also, this has a way more sympathetic resonance, but I also wasn't holding the pedal down over here. That actually sounds pretty resonant, but I think it has a little bit less than this. But you can hear that there is a big difference here with the sound of the treble. This here is more brighter, it's more direct, it's a bit more out there, it projects just a little bit better. 
And so that is something else I wanted to mention about these two pianos. This one has a bit of a quieter, more mellow tone that would be really great for playing in a small room. This one here has a bit of a bigger, louder, more powerful sound that would be great for playing in a larger room, playing with other musicians, or just playing loud and having fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this interesting review between these two pianos. I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about. Again, both of these have been completely rebuilt. I think this one has the original soundboard. I don't know that this one does, but all the other components have been replaced. This has a brand new Renner Action, which feels amazing. I think this does as well, but it has a bit of a different touch. It might not be Renner. I'm not 100% sure. The strings, dampers, hammers, everything has been completely gone over in these pianos, and they both sound and play absolutely amazing. I just saw these two sitting across from each other, and they had so many similarities that I really thought it would be a cool video to do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing it. Hopefully you guys liked it, and if you want, you can go check out some of my other videos. I'm here at uh, in Stanton, California at Benjamin Kim's Piano Store. It's called Kim's Pianos, and it's a really fantastic store. They have awesome pianos like these and many, many others. So if you're in the Stanton area, definitely drop by. Say hi to Benjamin Kim if he's here. Say hi to Steve Rivera if he's here. Tell them I said hi, and uh, tell them that you came for my videos or something like that. And definitely come by and check out their store, because they have an amazing selection of really high quality pianos. This one is one of my favorites in the store. Yeah, it's a baby grand but it's a really, really good one. Does the bass compete with the concert grand? Honestly, no, it doesn't, but it definitely outshines most any baby grand that you could put it up against. Very few, I think, would have that thick and that deep of a sound, even a little bit bigger pianos. Some of them might not have quite as nice of a sound in the bass, and I really love playing this piano. So again, hopefully you enjoyed it. You might want to go check out some of my other videos. I've got lots of others from Benjamin Kim's Piano Store, and so if you aren't able to come and visit the store in person, maybe you might enjoy watching those and kind of getting a virtual tour and seeing what his awesome collection of pianos sounds like. So if you do all that, thank you very much. If you want, you might want to think about subscribing to stay updated for all my later uh, upcoming videos. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.